This video is going to be so jam-packed and full of helpful tips and tricks to help you create a layered wood sign using laser wood cutouts and laser engraving. I'm Stephanie with IOIB Designs. Now, I know this is a long one, but stick with me. I promise you it is going to be so worth it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a weathered sign look without sanding. Well, okay. There's the initial sanding to prep the wood, but other than that, you're going to create this look without having to sand it. I'm going to show you how to create and use a template so that you can get your sign in real life to be aligned and perfectly straight, just exactly how you designed it in your software. I'll show you how to prepare your design so that it's ready for the Glowforge app. And you're going to get a bonus trick that I'm going to use as a result of a little oopsie I had during this project, but I'm going to show you how to use scrap wood when it's not actually big enough for your project. I'm going to share with you my favorite handy trick for making sure that your engraving is perfectly straight on your project. And I'm going to show you how to engrave on a project that is larger than the Glowforge workspace and you don't need a Glowforge Pro for this one. Now believe it or not I really did edit this video down as much as I could but it there was just so much information I needed to give you so it is a little longer than usual but of course there's that fast forward button so feel free to skip the parts that you don't need to see and get on to the parts that you do. And I've provided timestamps in the the description box below to make that easier for you to find the parts you want to see. I do consider this project to be a little more advanced, so if you are a beginner with Glowforge, this might not be the right video for you to start off with. Feel free to check out my Glowforge playlist and you might find a project that is a little more suitable if you are a beginner. And if you are considering purchasing a Glowforge of your own, I will leave my referral link in the description box below where you can save up to $500 on a new Glowforge. Okay, that was a lot, but I think that's all. So I think now it is time to get started with the project. I'm using a scrap piece of wood for this sign that's five and a half by 20 inches long. I'm just giving it a quick sand before painting. Now here's a new paint technique that I just kind of made up here. I'm not really sure how I got the idea to try this. I just knew I didn't want to have to wait for the paint to dry and sand it again because I'm not really a super fan of sanding. So I guess my impatience is what made me decide to take some rubbing alcohol while the paint was still wet and use it to wipe off the excess paint. I had first just tried wiping off the wet paint but it wasn't wiping away easily so I added some alcohol. So it's like when you stain wood and you wipe off the excess stain. I was just using the rubbing alcohol to help keep the paint wet enough to make it easier to remove. Just keep adding rubbing alcohol and going over the painted wood with a paper towel or rag until you achieve the look you like. I am really pleased with how this turned out. It looks more like natural aging has occurred on the sign rather than a forced distressed look. I will definitely be using this technique more. When I achieved the weathered look that I liked, I gave it a quick coat of a flat crystal clear protective coating. Now here you see I'm painting a scrap piece of wood white and using the same weathering technique. Only difference here was I had to give a light sanding with very fine sandpaper in between two coats of the white paint because the white paint just went on really thin. And paint actually raises the grain of the wood, which makes this added sanding step necessary on this type of plywood. I'm not sure if you can see that difference here in the one that was sanded on the right and the one on the left that has not been sanded. But this step wasn't necessary on the plank wood I used earlier. And you'll see later on how I didn't measure correctly and this scrap piece of wood is actually a little too small, but I'll fix that. And I also added some 3M double-sided adhesive tape to the back of the scrap wood because that's where I'm cutting my lettering out of and it will be much easier to adhere to the sign this way. So now I'm in Silhouette Studio where I do all of my designing. I have my sign mocked up here and it is, it's done to size. So what I did was create a rectangle the exact size of my board. So it is 20 inches by five and a half inches. And that way I can design um, the the lettering, the numbering here, everything I know is going to be placed on the sign. Um, it's going to fit to size just how I want it. So I know this is what it's going to look like. This is also what I'll send to customers when I'm custom designing something just to give them an idea of what the design is going to look like and their approval before I actually put it into production. Now I've already made sure that my words and everything is centered just like I want. Although one thing I think I forgot to do is make sure it's centered like top to bottom. So I'm just going to click on um, Lake Norman, the coordinates, and the compass. I'm going to group all those together real quick. Then I'm going to click on um, my outline of my sign. 
and I'm going to come up here and this little button right here it's like a circle with um like a little cross I, I don't know whatever <laughs> I don't know how you describe it but that that little button right there if you click that that centers it into um, it centers your top design onto your lower design so I don't know if you noticed but it did shift a little bit to the left I noticed so now I know it is centered exactly in the sign and I want to make sure that when I'm creating the real sign that I get this placement just like it is here so I'm going to show you a few little tricks that I do to make that happen all right, so in order to do that, I need to ungroup all of these things again. And I'm going to just make a copy of all of this just so I have the original um, there and I have it just how I want it. All right, so now here's where I'm going to play around with um, making this so that I get it just perfect on my sign. So I'm gonna take my um, the background of the sign and I'm just going to move this up and make this kind of like a little rectangle around my top wording. Now what this is going to do when I cut this out of the laser is going to basically give me a template that I can use to put these letters down on the sign. And I'll show you that in just a moment. It'll make more sense whenever I show you what I'm doing. I'm going to get rid of this bottom part right now because I don't need that yet. So I'm getting this ready to be the SVG that I'm going to import into the Glowforge software. So I need to make this the background of the sign. I don't want it um, to have color fill because that's going to tell Glowforge to engrave. I need it to cut. So I just need to get rid of the color fill whoops and now it needs to have a line so I'm gonna make that line red and I'm also going to make my words have a red outline and no fill no color fill so when you just have just an outline that tells Glowforge that you're going to cut and I'm going to group this together and now see there it's all grouped together so when I send this to Glowforge it's going to cut my whole rectangle and all of the letters out. So I'll be taking this and laying it right on my sign like this, if this makes any sense. <laughs> um, and then I can pop the cutout letters right in there onto my real sign. And it's gonna have the same exact placement as it has in my design software. Whoops. Good thing is there's always a back button if you click the wrong thing and move the wrong thing. Okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom section of the sign. So I'm ju just going to uh, control C, control V is copy and paste, just the shortcut. So copy and paste the original sign. Now I don't need Lake Norman anymore. I just need to make the rectangle go around the bottom uh, portion, around my compass and the coordinates, because I know that this is spaced exactly how I want it from the top and bottom, or from the bottom of the sign and from the sides. It's perfectly centered just how I want it. All right, so now I just need to make this no color fill and have a cut line. And I usually do my cut lines red. All right, now I'm gonna make this have a red cut line and no fill and then group this all together. Now I will want to save these as SVG, so I'm, gonna, I'm just um, highlighting both of them, coming up here to File, and I wanna do Save Selection. If I, if I did Save As, it's gonna save everything on this page as an SVG, and I don't want that. I just want this part, the part that is ready to go to Glowforge. So Save Selection, and I always save to hard drive and then find wherever you wanna save it. You wanna save it as an SVG. And I'm able to do that because I am in Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Um, if you don't have Business Edition and cannot save as an SVG, you can save as a PNG and Glowforge also accepts PNGs. So save as an SVG, okay. And now it is ready to go into Glowforge. Okay, so that is the way that I would normally do this. <laughs> and so I showed you that way first. Now I'm gonna show, I'm gonna move this file here over to the side, maybe. There we go. Move that over to the side. That is how I would normally do it. But today I'm actually using scrap pieces of wood because I am trying to get down my pile of scrap wood. So this is 
a little more complicated, but it's still gonna work the same. So I'm gonna do something similar as the process I just showed you. I'm gonna copy my original sign, and now I need to measure the little section of scrap that I'm actually using, and I'm going to make my rectangles to those dimensions, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna do the top part first again, so let me get rid of um, the coordinate section. All right, so my scrap piece of wood, I have the area to fill is about 13, uh-oh, I forgot, let me look real quick again, 13 by two and a half. So I'm going to bring this rectangle up. Ah, this is not gonna work. Okay, so I freaked out for a minute and was thinking I wasn't gonna be able to make this work, but I am determined to use this scrap piece of wood. So I'm gonna have to make a few adjustments to um, the original design, just slight adjustments to make this work. Um, whenever I was checking to see if the scrap wood would be, um, if I would be able to use this piece of scrap wood, scrap wood for this sign, I was only measuring the height of the letters. I wasn't taking into account this little um, section of sign that I was um, gonna need to cut out to use for my template. But a couple adjustments will be fine. All right, so I need to make this 2.75. So now, okay, so I'm just moving this little node here and I'm trying to get it right at 2.75. I'm looking here on the sides at these numbers. All right, so 2.77, let me make it a little tiny smaller. That might be the best I can do. That's close enough. All right, now you see these letters here, they're right there at the edge, they're not gonna cut right. So I'm just gonna click on this and I'm gonna use my arrows to just nudge them up a couple times and I'm gonna make sure I count how many times I nudge them up because then I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom. That way I'll have the same distance on um, the top and the bottom. I hope this is making sense. All right, so I'm um, taking my arrow keys. One, two, three, let me just do four. Uh, so I moved it up four um, notches and that should give me enough little bit here at the bottom um, so that it still cuts out correctly. All right, now over here, I need to make this 13 inches, I believe I said. So I'm gonna squeeze this in 13, and I'm gonna see how many letters I can get cut um, at 13. All right, so 13 is somewhere here in the middle of the R. So I'm just gonna keep coming over this way. Oh wait, you know what? Let me do one more thing before I do this. Let me get this back to 20. Go up here. Okay, let me make, since I've adjusted this um, four notches up, let me copy this and paste it um, because you may be figuring out by now we're gonna do half and half. So I'm coming over here finding thir where 13 inches is. And like I said, 13 inches is gonna be in the middle of the R. So I'm just gonna come over here, not worry about the rest of these letters for right now. I'm just, whoops, I gotta um, ungroup those so that I can just delete these letters. And I'm gonna make this my cut file again. So I'm going to take away the color, add a cut line, and do the same for the letters. Now my letters are ungrouped, so um, I have to select them all. Whoops, I did the wrong thing. No color, cut line. All right, and now I'm going to group those together. So that's gonna be one SVG. And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here, make this, I know, well, I know I need basically the R, the M and the R, M, A, N. So I'm just gonna do the second part of this. And this is eight and a half inches, so I'm gonna be able to fit it onto my scrap. So let me just get rid of the letters. Whoops, I gotta ungroup them again and get rid of the letters that I'm gonna have in my other piece. So delete those and now make this the cut file. All right, now again, I gotta highlight all my letters, take away the inside color, just add an outline, group those together all right, 
and I hope you were able to follow along. So now I'm going to take the original sign, copy and paste it again. Now I don't need the Lake Norman, I did that part. But remember I need to move these down for um, little arrow hits. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And so that way I just want to have the distance between the bottom of my numbers and my sign the same as on the top. It's so slight, it probably doesn't really all matter all that much, but I'm just um, a perfectionist like that, so it bothers me. <laughs> I'm I, No one would even know, I'm sure. All right, now I'm going to move this rectangle down and I've got, I need to make it 2.75. Okay, correction. <laughs> I forgot that I am actually not cutting out the coordinate numbers. I am going to engrave those instead because I like to mix the um, 3D lettering look with some engraving. So I am going to cut out the little compass, but um, I'm going to engrave the number. So I'm gonna do this slightly different. I'm gonna actually just move this little compass off. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a cut file. I believe I can place that on my own, so I'm not going to worry about um, doing the same method with the compass. So I'll have that as ready to cut, but I do wanna help get my alignment on the sign um, when I put it in the Glowforge software. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to leave the let, why do I keep calling them letters? Um, I'm going to keep the numbers with a fill color and they have no cut line. So that's going to tell Glowforge that I want that all of that to be engraved. Now, if I left this here um, filled in with blue, it's gonna also tell Glowforge to engrave all of that, and we definitely don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and unfill that, and I'm gonna put a cut line around here. But when I put it into Glowforge, I will make sure I just say to ignore this cut line when I get to this part. But what this is gonna do is this is going to help me align it on the sign um, in Glowforge. And I will show you that um, when I get over to the Glowforge software so it makes more sense. But basically it's going to help me get my engraving perfectly aligned on my sign. So I'll be doing the same kind of thing as I do with these here on my actual sign, but this instead I'll be doing it in the Glowforge software. And I feel like none of that made sense. So <laughs> keep watching and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about because I'm having trouble explaining it. All right, um, so let's get going over to the Glowforge software. Okay, so I am in the Glowforge app now, and now I, you can see I have my material here. This is my scrap piece of wood, and it's in the Glowforge ready to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is come up to these three dots, and I'm gonna set focus. I need Glowforge to adjust the laser height to where I'm going to be lasering. So you wanna make sure you're clicking on an area where you plan to cut or engrave. And I don't know if you noticed, but it kind of zoomed out a little bit, that was, uh, Glowforge getting everything set to just the right height. That is one of the things I love about Glowforge is there's no thinking involved that Glowforge does that step for you automatically. So now I'm gonna come up here and add my artwork and you're, we're just going to get the, um, the SVG that was created in Silhouette Studio. And now when it brings it into the software, you see it kind of zooms in and I don't see my artwork anywhere. Just zoom out over here and since this is a large file, it's just over here to the side. So the first thing that I'm going to laser is the first part of Lake Norman. So I'm gonna bring it over in my work area and then zoom in so I can see what I'm working with. Now, right now it's got um, just dotted lines because it is, um, oh, I haven't told Glowforge what the settings are right now. So it says unknown material up here. Well, this is not proof grade material. This is 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood. So I'm gonna click here. I've used this before, so I already have it as a custom setting here. If you wanna know how to create custom settings in Glowforge, I will link a video um, up in the iCards that goes into more detail about how to create a custom cut setting. All right, so that's already ready for me. And now you see it made the cut line appear solid and red. So that's showing that it's going to cut this here. Now, as you can see, because I'm using a scrap, I am like cutting it super close here. <laughs> this, 
my measurements were off so this is not the best example but hey this is real life this is what's happening so I am still going to cut it out like this because it's showing me it's going to cut it and it looks like my letters are not going to be cut off and the main thing that I really need to stay intact is this rectangle so some of it's going to be there's going to be spaces in it but I still think it's going to work um, I'm really not sure to be honest but hey I'm doing this one kind of as I go with you so um, you're just seeing my real workflow in this video all right so let's see how this goes so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click print and now it is going to tell me how long it is going to take to cut this out so it's going to take three minutes and 31 seconds now I need to go over to the Glowforge and hit that magic glowing button and Glowforge is going to get cutting and fingers crossed that this works like I need it to all right here we go okay so as you can see I have all of my letters cut out and I was able to get it all done on the scraps even though as you can see the tops of my rectangles have little cutouts in them that's fine my main concern was the corners that I'm going to line up on my sign and that is intact so it's still gonna work fine the only thing that didn't work was my compass it was just too fine of detail so um, it didn't cut well Let's see it's all it's all messed up so I created another compass that was not as detailed and then something I'm going to have you guys help me decide later on is I was thinking maybe instead of a compass I put the shape of the lake in the middle of the coordinate so I'm going to have you decide on that later I'm going to show you both ways and see which one you guys think looks better so I'm going to take this here and I'm going to just take some painters tape and tape this to the corner here. I'm lining up my corner with the corner of my sign and then I'm gonna tape it. I'm gonna make sure I don't cover up where the letters are supposed to go. And I wanna make sure it's just all lined up there. And I'm taping it to my sign. I'm gonna go ahead and put another piece down here to be sure I keep it straight. So you can see it's all taped and lined up along the edge of my sign and that is going to allow me to place these letters down straight. So now all I'm going to do is take my letters one at a time. I'm going to remove the backing, the 3M tape on the back, remove that, and I'm just going to stick it down. Oops, I have a problem. Let me show you something. You see in here, you can see there's the tape, um, the backing of the 3M tape is showing through there. I need to get that removed. Sometimes um, the backing doesn't always come off with your letter. So you wanna make sure that you don't have any of that happening. So now that that is clear, now I'm just gonna put this letter, this L, I'm gonna pop it right in there and push it down onto the sign. Now I remove the backing off of this letter and same thing, pop it in there stick it on my sign. So I'm just going to do that for all of my letters. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the tape. Let me just show you. I can't do this side yet because there's an overlap. So that's why I'm going to now remove my painter's tape from this side. And I'm going to lift straight up and just making sure that all of my letters are sticking down. And then I like to give them an extra push just to make sure they stuck down really well. And now I have them on there straight. So now I'm going to repeat the process on this other side. Now this is a little tricky because of the overlap there. It's still overlapping, but I'm going to make it work. If I have to eyeball just one letter, I might have to eyeball that R a little bit. But with everything else down and straight, I'll be able to do that relatively easily. There. 
that wasn't so bad. I was able to just kind of push it down and make it get right in there. Now I'm just going to remove my template and I'm done with those and I have the words on here nice and straight across the top. Now I'm going to hold off deciding on the compass or the lake right now because I want to get the coordinates on here. And as I told you before, I was going to combine the 3D elements um, of the letters with some engraving of the coordinates. So I'm going to show you how I use that other template in the Glowforge to engrave the coordinates on this sign. I could also do cutouts for the coordinates, but that just involves a lot of little pieces. So um, when I'm working with smaller designs, it's much easier to just engrave if possible. So let's head over to the Glowforge and see how I do that. So I wanna show you how I have my sign set up in Glowforge. I had to remove the crumb tray because the sign was too thick to um, engrave with the crumb tray in. So I have it sitting on about, let's see, one, two, three, four pieces of plywood. And then because it is longer than the engraving area of Glowforge, I'm gonna have to engrave each side separately. So I have it pushed over here to the right. And what you wanna be careful of is that this side of the sign is not going to be in the way of this arm when the arm moves. And then to make sure that my sign is straight horizontally, I have some straight edge pieces that I've put down here. They're just some scraps, or they're actually jigs that I use for something else. But that way I'm going to be able to slide my sign over to do the other side, and I know it's going to stay at the same level. So let me just move this over here, and again I'm just making sure that this arm is not going to hit it. Don't move this when the Glowforge is on. My Glowforge is on right now, so I can't move this arm. Um, but I can tell it's not gonna be in the way. So that is my setup, and now I'm ready to go to the Glowforge software and start the engrave. So I'm back in the Glowforge software. Now, if my sign were to fit in the workspace of Glowforge, it would make this step much easier. All I would have to do is move this template that I made earlier that was the same size as the sign, and I would basically line up this rectangle with the bottom of my sign in Glowforge. And if the whole sign was in the workspace area, I would be able to just engrave on one go, and it would be much simpler than what I'm about to show you. But this is a workaround for my sign being longer than the Glowforge workspace. So stick with me. I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can. Um, I hope it makes sense. So I'm lining up my design with, right now I'm just focusing on the bottom of my sign. And it's you can see it's not gonna be perfect. That's because the camera distorts your, um, whatever you have in there, distorts it a little bit because it's a fisheye lens. I know that my sign is straight because I have it lined up against my straight edges. So I'm focusing here on the bottom and the side. This looks like it's lined up with the side of my sign. So I know this, is um, this coordinate is where I want it to engrave. Now you can see here this coordinate it runs off and it's out of the workspace area because actually the workspace area it cuts off right about here. Um, it's not this whole rectangle when you go to engrave. What I want to do is I'm going to click on this design here, right click, and I want to paste as a new step. That's going to copy and paste that design so I have, I have another copy of it and it adds it over here to your, um, to your files over here. Now, the only one, I'm just gonna ignore that for a minute. So I'm gonna just work with this one right now. Now, as you, okay, here you can see, you see this like um, lighter gray border around here? That's actually where Glowforge cuts off and it can't, it, it can't engrave in that space. So as you can see, I've got the eight and um, those little two um, dash marks that would not engrave but I don't want to engrave all but the eight and those little hash marks just because I wanna make sure that I get it all lined up, um, this coordinate all lined up together. So I wanna engrave it all at one time. So I'm going to right click on this and ungroup. So I want to delete this coordinate over here. And it actually got, also got rid of my rectangle, that's fine. I don't, I don't need that at this point. So I'm going to engrave just the left coordinate first. Now over here, let's see, it's this one right here. I already have a custom setting. I'm gonna do just a very light engrave 
on the paint, it's just going to basically take the layer of paint off. It's not going to be a deep engrave. So I've already done that before. So I have it as a custom setting. Let me tell you the settings real quick, just in case you're interested. It's 1000 speed, 20 power, 225 lines per inch. It's a very light engrave. Sometimes I end up having to run it a second time, um, but you can always engrave more. You can't take away engraving. So I don't want to get it too deep um, because then with a dark color sign, sometimes the engraving doesn't show up very well. So I want it super light. Let me go to Glowforge and get this engraving and then I'll show you how that turns out and show you how we're going to get the other coordinate lined up perfectly. So now the left side engraving is done and I have not opened the lid or anything yet because as you can see, I'm trying to zoom in here close, you can see that there is some of the blue paint is still showing through. Um, if I wanted to have that very clean and just show the bare wood underneath, I would go ahead and run another uh, pass through of the engrave. But because I'm making the sign be a little weathered and rustic, I'm going to go ahead and keep it just like it is. So I'm not going to do a second pass of the engrave. The first one was perfect just the way I want it. So now that I know the engrave is just how I want it, now I'm going to go ahead and open the door to the Glowforge. And now I need to slide my sign over so that I can engrave the left side, or sorry, the right side. And again, I just need to make sure that the the arm here, um, that my sign is not going to be in the way of the arm over here. So I can't move the arm because my machine is on right now, but it looks like it's not going to be in the way. So I think I'm good. And my sign is again pushed up against these um, straight edges so I know it's going to engrave in the same area um, in the same line as it did before so I'm ready to engrave the right side now back at, in the Glowforge software again I because I opened the lid of the Glowforge I always like to reset the focus so that's the first thing I'm going to do set the focus because now I'm going to be engraving over here on this side. All right, so I can tell it set focus. Now, this is where I had the coordinates placed before to engrave on the left side. But as you can see, let me zoom in here a minute. As you can see, the sign where it's engraved because I slid it over so these numbers aren't matching up. I don't need those numbers anymore, but I'm just gonna keep them there for a second. I think I can delete them at this point. Um, yeah, actually, let me just delete them. I'm just nervous I'm going to mess this up because literally I'm doing this for the first time with you guys. All right, so I'm going to bring that copy of the file over. And what I'm going to do now actually is I'm going to line up what I just engraved. I'm going to be trying to line that up as perfectly as it can. I'm also lining up the line here, the bottom line of my rectangle with the bottom of my sign again. I'm looking to make sure that what I already engraved is also kind of lining up and that's going to help me line up this right coordinate. Does that make sense? Can you see what I did? <laughs> I hope that seeing what I did makes you understand it better than me having to fumble around my words to explain it. Again, like I did before, well, just to be, just to be safe, I'm going to paste as a new step and just have another copy over here just in case I mess something up here. Now I'm going to take this one, just repeating the steps I did before, I'm going to ungroup and I'm going to delete these coordinates because I already engraved those. So I just need to engrave these here. So let me come over here and just make sure it's at the right settings. Yep. It is set for my light engrave. So it is ready to go. It's a lot harder to, ex to explain than it really is to do, but I hope you see that wasn't really that difficult. Um, it just takes some thinking and, you know, take your time as you work through it so you don't mess anything up. So let me go ahead and get this engraving and then the sign is almost done. So exciting. So here is the finished engrave and I love how it turned out. Now, one more thing, I, well, two more things I need to do. I, you may have noticed if you've seen some of my previous videos, usually I mask letters um, so that they're nice and clean and you don't have any of the charring marks. So you can see when you look up close, there's some of the, the brownish color from the charring. So I purposely didn't mask this time because I wanted to keep this a rustic looking sign. I kind of like it just like this. I could leave it, but I am going to take a little bit of alcohol and a micro microfiber cloth 
and I'm just going to rub off a little bit of the charring on the letters um, but keeping some of it just to keep that rustic weathered look like I'm going for so I'm just going to go through all of the letters like this like I said a little bit of rubbing alcohol microfiber cloth and it takes a lot of that charring off of there but it is going to leave a little bit to have a bit of a rustic look so let me finish that and then you are going to help me decide what goes in the center of my sign okay so originally this was designed having a compass in the center so there it is with the compass and let me switch out and here it is with the shape of the lake so let me know in the comments below which one do you prefer do you like the compass in the middle or the lake in the middle